Hello and good evening. Right uh, today, I want to start off uh, looking at the Gustavo Maroni down here. All right. Uh, I'll open up my own PDF copy. So uh, this book is suitable for a sort of introduction to uh, human genetic traits. <clears throat> So it starts off looking, uh, it says um, the, the first example of Mendelian inheritance is Alcaptinoria. So um, we studied this, if you have taken this course um, uh, on advanced genetics. All right. And um, basically, it's just telling you what I've told you earlier in, in, in normal, in um, uh, genetic crosses. Uh, in order to determine the inheritance pattern of a particular uh, gene, you do crosses here. So for example, it says, uh, if you're dealing with experimental plants or animals, demonstrating the validity of hypothesis or recessive might involve preparing homozygous strains and then mating them to obtain F1 and F2 and then, you know, calculate the ratios. This is how you do it with uh, Drosophila and so on, right? Um, and sometimes you need to do test crosses, right? So you have a hypothesis and then you test it out that's what you do but but for human uh, genetics we cannot do that so that's why it says you know that, that you need to be able to distinguish between pedigree analysis and genetic cross here it defines what is a genetic cross and so on so I won't go into that <clears throat> you can read but basically it says pedigree analysis is a shorthand representation um, it, it, it represent it, it gives you an idea of what has happened um, and it records it and then it shows the presence or absence of a particular trait that you're looking for. And then um, the genotypes are deduced. You're going to, well, of course, nowadays you can do molecular typing and so on. But essentially, when you do a pedigree analysis, you deduce it just by looking. Um, I'm going to go through, uh, remember I mentioned to you the tutorial on pedigree. I, I, will, I will have some, some points I want to, to go on that one in a bit. So, and then uh, this book goes on to talk about uh, the, the and as, as any genetic textbook would go, uh, it talks about the an examples of different types of inheritance. It starts off with dominant, um, and then uh, so it gives you the, the um, uh, symbols of the pedigree. Um, this is an example of dominant traits. So I, wa I want to, to focus on this one for a while. I'm going to use this as an example. Um, um, so that I uh, just to, to illustrate now if you would if you had done the the um, tutorials this one mm, right if you open this one so remember this one I mentioned how to I showed you how to do one of these basically what you do here is you test out if you haven't done them you need to do it because otherwise you won't really understand what I'm trying to tell you. You test you by answering the questions. You test it whether it is possible to do a recessive, whether it's possible to do dominant, autosomal dominant, and so on. And you'll find that sometimes you are left with more than one uh, possible mode of inheritance, correct? It could be recessive, it could be dominant. So I want to, to, to focus on that one by showing you this pedigree. Now, this is a this is with uh, autosomal dominant. And to to illustrate, I think I'll just show you my uh, uh, board. And um, let's see. Okay, this is the the same pedigree. Now, um, if if it is autosomal dominant, then uh, you would assume that the one that shows the trait. So D1 is disease, D2 is normal. I don't know whether you can see that. I hope you can see it. So this one will be D1, D2, dominant, right? Dominant. Uh, so this one has got no, doesn't show any symptoms. So uh, it's D2, D2. This is also D1, D2. We can deduce the parents. So for example, this one, uh, both of them, well, the, the thing is, uh, you don't know information about the parents. 
I think it's, it shows a question mark that means it doesn't know whether the parents are affected or not. So we'll just leave that part. So now from here you go down and then you'll, you'll find that you can deduce again the, the, the genotypes of this person affected. So this must have D1 and D2. So which is correct, D1 from the father, D2 from the mother. This one is D1, D2, D2 from the father, D2 from the mother. And this one is normal, well, uh, unaffected. So it's D2, D2, So which is fine. And then you go down further, because this two is uh, affected, so you must have gotten the D1 again. You don't know what the other parent has, so you put a dash. But suffice to, to write D1 because you know it's affected. Here, you know this one is not affected, this one is not affected, so it's D2, D2, dash, dash, you don't know the, the, the genotype of the spouse. And then, so, so you leave it at that, all right? So from here, you may conclude it. Now, what I want to show you is that, okay, now let's just say, uh, let's just remove this. Okay. Now, I, I've removed that. Now, okay. Can we assume that, or oh, is it possible that this, this family runs on uh, uh, autosomal recessive? So now, let's say D1 disease, D2 uh, normal. So, um, because it's recessive, so this one must be D1, D1, correct? Uh, this one you don't know, but this one must be D1, D1 again. Remember, it's recessive. So, D1, D1. Um, because this one is affected, right? So, this one must also D1, D1. Which means that this person must be a carrier. Can you get that? Right? This must be a carrier because, again, this is recessive. So let's just say that the carrier, because it cannot be a homozygous D1, D1, otherwise it'll be, she'll be affected as well. But because she's not affected, she must be a carrier. So let's just say that she has D1 and D2. Okay? So we are trying to assume that this is uh, recessive disorder. Now, that again makes sense. So this one is D1, D1. Correct? And she will be a carrier as well, D1, D2. Okay. Now, what about this? Okay. The mother is uh, 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 has carried the D1, D1. So, yeah, it must be possible that he must be a carrier as well. D1, D2. Okay. And then, if because she can, he cannot be D1, D1, because then he will be affected because he's not affected. So he's a carrier. He has. He must be a carrier. So then this one makes sense. Okay. What about this? Um, because the father is D1, D1, none of this is affected, so it must be D1, D2. Right. But why? Because we are assuming her to be D2, D2, or D2, D3. Right. Is this possible? Yes. So does that mean that uh, this is could be this could be um, uh, recessive autosomal recessive inheritance? No. Yes, I repeat, it cannot be. Well, I wouldn't say it cannot be. I would say it's unlikely. Why? Why do I say so? Now, um, although it is possible, you will see that in order for it to be a recessive disorder, this person must be a carrier, right? And now, for a genetic disease, you will, uh, we normally, we call it a rare disease. Well, it is rare. You don't normally see for every, from, from in, in the next person or so. You will see that uh, genetic diseases like comes in like one in three thousand, you know, one in one thousand. Even that, it's not like your ABO blood group where you see the next person. I'm A, you B, you, you know, uh, you know. So that's very, that is very very common. But genetic diseases are normally rare. If it is rare, that means the chances of getting a carrier in the population is also rare. 
So, based on that, if you are a human geneticist, although this one, as we seen earlier, it is it is uh, autosomal dominant. When we tried uh, it to be autosomal recessive, it's, it also is possible. But we looked at that. This is only possible for autosomal recessive if you know the chances of getting that person must be a carrier. You know? and then um, um, Mm, and then, and then that also means that you know you you are going to get a lot of carriers, and this event is is by genetic terms is is unlikely. So when you are, if you do if you do your your um, exercises, right? This one, if you do this as exercise, uh, for example. Um, um, Let's look at D, all right? Let's look at D. Now, if you can just do this on top of your head, uh, I would say it is likely that uh, this is X-linked recessive. So that means the X. Um, oh no, sorry. This this is likely X-linked dominant, all right? Because both the daughters has got it. And um, and that because that will be more likely than X-linked recessive, which means if it is recessive, that means you need the mother to be a carrier as well. So the likelihood of uh, any any person in this case in this case, if you look at this uh, if you look at this pedigree again, um, yeah, this is an outsider. The the likelihood of of, of, an, of an outsider carrying the disease early, similar to the family, is a very very uh, low case. All, and so because of that, although it is possible, uh, for this purpose you say it's possible, no problem. But uh, if you are into genetic um, research and so on, you'll find that you know it's unlikely. And for that matter, you need to do some calculations. All right, um, which is, I think, the subject of the, of the next video. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.